風の行く先を追い散らぬジェパーディクト Hello, everybody. My name is Haru Sam. I make waifu medic content, and today's video, we're gonna be talking about my best DPS Kokomi build that I'm gonna show you. So, we're gonna tackle this video two ways we got Kokomi crit build, and we got Kokomi non crit build. I'm gonna show you how to DPS with both of these builds. I'm gonna talk about the teams. I'm gonna show you my builds and then we're gonna jump into the showcases and that's how this video is gonna be. I do wanna say quickly that I do stream on twitch.tv forward slash hydrosam. Guys, if you're not following my Twitch, I would appreciate the follow there. That's the best place to hang out with me, guys, and we always have fun on stream. So if you're interested, the link will be in the description or in the pinned comment. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, guys, so the first DPS build we're going to talk about is this extremely copium build right here. Obviously, we're not going to be able to do any type of critical hits with Kokomi. And if we're DPSing with Kokomi, most of her damage is going to come from her elemental burst. So the way you get more damage is from her max HP. And if you're trying to DPS with Kokomi, this is the talent that you want to prioritize over every other talent so since we know we're getting damage from our hp the two-piece tenacity is a good set to have and a two-piece heart of death just because we want that extra hydro damage bonus this is one of the best combos you can use for regular dps kokomi and prepare yourselves because you're about to see some of the most copium freaking artifacts in your whole entire life let's start off with this flower my flower has 25 percent attack percent 5.8 hp 13.9 defense 5.2 energy recharge the way you want to prioritize your substats is HP percent, then attack percent, then flat HP, then flat attack in that order. Those are the most ideal substats you want. So here we got 25% attack. Good. Look at this freaking feather, guys. Holy crap. When I rolled this, I couldn't believe it either. This is so freaking copium. But oh my gosh, it works for freaking copium kokomi. Dang it. And then we got this one, guys. Attack percent. And look what it rolled into 20 freaking 0.4 hp oh my gosh it's so copium but i guess it works for kokomi it's a good balance i know ideally you should go for an hp main stat on your sense piece but since we got 20.4 percent hp and it's a freaking heart of death piece i decided to go with this over a hp sense piece that i have that sucks in general and my hydro damage goblet this is actually my worst piece for kokomi it doesn't really have that much good stats it's copium i guess and then my healing bonus circlet this one's pretty good for kokomi i have freaking 20 1.6 hp and and 239 flight hp and, and it didn't roll into attack or energy recharge this is probably the freaking most copium artifacts you've ever seen actually the most cursed artifacts you've ever seen but for kokomi since she's freaking cursed it works for her 32k hp 1886 attack and in my case i decided to get the everlasting moon glow so i am rocking it r1 which my bad now our hp turns into 38k one of the best ways you can run kokomi as a main dps if you're using this copium dps build is in a taser comp and by taser comp i mean electro charge comp if you don't have raiden shogun try to have a hydro character on your team so that way you can you know get more hydro elemental particles for kokomi's elemental burst but if you have raiden shogun to recharge your burst that's fine too so in my team with mona i'm running a Dueling Tales of Dragon Slayer, so that way whenever I switch into Kokomi after using her elemental burst, not only will we get the buff from the Omen, but we'll also get the extra attack percent boost from the Dueling Tales of Dragon Slayer. For Beidou, since we want to do as much damage as possible, we're going to rock a 4-piece MMO of Sarah Fate, and then hopefully whenever opponents are weak, we're able to trigger this proc from the Wolf Gravestone. If you don't have Wolf Gravestone, it's fine, it's not necessary, but I'm just showing you what I have. And then for Raiden, you could put, of course, the Tenacity of Middleith if you want. So that way she can, uh, you know, give that much attack boost for your Kokomi as possible. I'm not going to do it because I don't have enough artifacts to go around with this. But you can if you want. All right, so now let's go ahead and show you what this freaking belly button of freaking Doom can do in a DPS showcase as a taser comp. くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、くっ、
ここより弱滅の時炭になるが水中玄関これが運命ですあれ狂いなさいご安心をはっやっはっふっはっはっやっやっふっせごわいせっさっふっ行くぞ無我の教師やってストップフッフッハッ鎖をよく見てよ運命には逆らえません海のちぎりよトッやっハッハッハッハッハッハッハッハッハッハッハッすなわち永遠なり見切りましたふっやっさっせっやっこれが海運命が水面に映るのですこれがあれ狂いなさいはっ Okay, now that you saw that kind of copium DPS kind of team, let me go ahead and show you the real DPS Kokomi right here. We're running Lost Pair of Sacred Winds, and I think you know where I'm going with this. We're running a four piece Blizzard Strayer set. Here's my not copium pieces. Well, actually, JK, some of them are copium. Definitely copium. Crit rate. And then I crit rate again. So the whole point, of course, is to try to make Kokomi crit. Because, guys, let me tell you one thing right now. Man, there's a reason why Miholo didn't want this character to crit. Because, man, oh, man. Even with 84 crit damage. Well, you'll see it right now in a bit. And you'll be the judge for yourselves if it's not Copium or if it is Copium. All right? So we got negative 0.9% crit rate. But with this team, we're going to actually get more crit rate. So first of all, we're running a freeze team with Rosaria. Rosaria, if you're able to get her to 100% crit rate, she will give you maximum 15% extra crit rate. So let's just say 15% just for simplicity's sake. I'm running Mona again because I recently got C4. And C4, especially in a freeze team when we're able to extend Omen, we're going to increase Kokomi's crit rate by 15%. But a good substitution in case you don't have a C4 Mona is honestly just any crowd character like Diona. Because if you have double crowd resonance, if they're frozen, you're going to be getting an extra 15% crit rate. So either way is possible. I'm just using Mona because I can. I'm getting crit rate. I'm able to boost up Kokomi's damage with Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer. And of course, boost up her damage by 60% because of the omen. Especially since we're going to be extending it in this freeze team. We're going a little meta today, boys, because uh, Kokomi definitely needs it. And uh, we're running Kazuha so that we can increase Kokomi's elemental hydro damage bonus by whatever percent is his freaking elemental mastery. So when you add 15 from Rosaria, 15 from Mona, that's 30. And if they're frozen, you add another 40% from Blizzard Strayer. So 40 plus 30 is 70%. So essentially we have 69, nice by the way, 69.1% crit rate. Of course, only if they're frozen. So now let's go ahead and show you what that's going to look like on Spiral Abyss. I acknowledge that you are a Huh? <laughs> 
These last clips are just me showing off Kokomi's normal attack damage in open world. As I close this video, I want to say that I guess there's a reason why Kokomi can't crit because I imagine if she would, she'd freaking overpower Raiden and so many other characters and well, it sucks, but you know what? The Kokomi crit build, if you can achieve it guys, it's really fun. Like, I know it's not the most optimal guys, but when I was making this video and when I was on stream, it was really fun to use. So even though Kokomi gets a lot of hate from the community and, and she's been controversial, I just want to say that I like her. I know from my first impressions video, I said I didn't like her, but she's starting to grow on me more and more. And with that, I'll sign off. I love you all so much. And remember, waifu over meta, and I'll see you in the next video.